Hi, it's Arch Centeno, and uh, this is a video which is meant to accompany the form we give PICL patients after their procedure. And we're going to go through all of the different structures that are commonly injected during a PICL procedure. There's also a live version of this video with questions and answers, but this one's going to focus just on the information. So as you know, uh, I developed this subtyping system for CCI. There are eight different types of CCI and uh, which structures get treated all depends on the type of CCI that that patient has. So this is the form uh, that is the uh, record of what we did during the PICL procedure. Uh, the goal is to hand this to the patient either after the procedure or shortly thereafterwards, stating this is what we did. And so we'll start with the facet joints that were injected. A facet joint injection is uh, the injection of the small joints in the neck. These are about the size of your finger joints and there are two at each level. Uh, the needle is precisely inserted into the facet joint or the back of the facet joint using x-ray guidance and then radiographic contrast to ensure placement. There are a lot of folks out there doing what they call a facet injection, but it's just sort of blindly sticking the needle in there someplace or using less than standard of care ultrasound to perform the injection or using x-ray guidance, but no contrast, et cetera, et cetera. But we, we do this the, the correct way. Now, the three most commonly injected facets are going to be 01, which is this standard uh, concave convex joint, and then 12, which is a biconvex joint, and then C23. The facet capsules are shown there in red. Uh, the injection may include the injection of those facet capsules in addition to the joint. Just be careful because there's a lot of folks that describe a, quote, facet capsule injection but they're actually not documented, documenting in any way that they injected the facet capsule. They just injected somewhere in the vicinity of where the facet capsule probably lives. And then uh, on the left there, uh, this is what a C23 facet injection looks like. On the right, uh, what a C0C1 facet injection looks like. And then you have to have digital subtraction angiography if you're going to be injecting C0C1 and C1C2, which allows the doctor to confirm that the injection isn't into the important vertebral artery. And that's what DSA looks like. Next up are the internal upper cervical ligaments injected. These are the ones that can be reached from the front during a PICL approach. And these are all deep upper cervical ligaments here. And the most common ones that patients often hear about are the alar ligament and accessory ligament and the transverse ligament. And those are shown there. Realize that we can get at some of these ligaments two different ways. So for example, for the alar ligament, we can get at it from below the atlas. There's also an above atlas approach in many patients where we really don't know what their response is gonna be. And we're concerned about a very large flare up will only start with injecting below the atlas. And in other patients who we know have a more robust response, meaning that they're, we, we're not concerned about them flaring up, we'll usually inject above and below. This is a cross-section of the other deep ligaments. You can see the S-A-A-O-L there, the A-A-O-M, apical, cruciate, which is that transverse, and tectorial from the front. Now the alar ligaments are involved in reducing that side to side or C1-C2 overhang. The transverse ligament uh, is involved in controlling the position of the dens and flexion. It almost acts as a seatbelt for the dens. 
Uh, so if you have a high grab oaks, the transverse ligament would be a, a focus. And all of those other anterior ligaments, SAOL, AAOM, and apical, are to uh, reduce the extension of the skull on the upper neck. So if there's an issue with the skull sliding backwards, um, especially as you look up, those are some of the ligaments that are critical in stabilizing that type of instability. We can also inject the lateral AO oblique ligament from the front only. And again, like those other anterior ligaments that we just described, this one is important in reducing the tendency of the skull to slide backwards or the skull to rock backwards. We can also get the anterior longitudinal ligament, which is important in stabilizing C23 in extension here as shown here, and also the anterior C0-C1 facet capsule. They're both shown in yellow here. Posterior cervical ligaments, these are ligaments that can be reached from the back, uh, and we use both ultrasound and or fluoroscopic imaging depending on the ligament. So the common ones here would be nuchal, uh, which is at the very top there off to the left, vertebral dural ligament, which is between C1 and C2, the supraspinous and then interspinous ligaments, and then they're also shown off to the right. These are the ligaments that limit flexion. So, for instance, if there's C2-3 instability in flexion or um, any of the other instabilities in flexion, these ligaments might be helpful. Now, for some types of instabilities, we need to hit the anterior ligaments as well, but it's always a good idea to start with a posterior ligament uh, injection because that's going to be less invasive to see if that helps in instabilities involving flexion. Then as far as muscles injected, lots of different muscles that can be injected here. We'll often inject these with platelet pore plasma. So the other injections that we've been talking about on the ligament side were with bone marrow concentrate. Uh, these mus muscle injections are done with platelet pore plasma because platelet pore plasma, plasma has been shown to help the stem cells within the muscle themselves called satellite cells proliferate. So there are many different deep muscles. Most important one you'll probably hear about or have checked on your form is rectus capitis posterior minor. That's a muscle in the midline there that's also jacked into the dura and can cause headaches. Again, we're only going to inject a structure if it's symptomatic. So if that's not symptomatic in you, it won't be injected, but if it is, it will be. Then there are, lig there are muscles up front as well, the longus capitis and longus coli. And then we've got the big muscles of the neck that are commonly injected uh, if they are symptomatic. During a PICL procedure, the upper trapezius is a common one, as shown off on the left there. In the middle, we have the levator scapula, which is another common one. And then the sternocleidomastoid on the right, which is a common one. We also can inject tendon to bone attachment and this is usually done with either a platelet lysate enhanced prolotherapy solution or bone marrow concentrate. So here, for example, uh, this would be up against the skull is where we would be uh, injecting. So if I get, let me get a pen going here. So we're talking about up in this area is where we would be injecting right along the uh, nuchal ridge in the skull. Another common area we could inject if it's tender on the patient is going to be way up in here uh, in the sternocleidomastoid where it takes its uh, insertion or sometimes even down here at its origin. 
And then we can higher dissect nerves as well. All this means is carefully injecting platelet lysate and a nanogram, so a very tiny dose of dexamethasone around the nerve to provide both a mechanical breakup of scar tissue as well as growth factors that can hopefully facilitate nerve repair. So these are nerves that snake through this muscle complex. So TON is the third occipital nerve in the middle. GON is the greater occipital nerve. LON is the lesser occipital nerve. And AT, as shown here, is a temporal nerve, sometimes also called the tempororicular nerve. Now realize that these higher dissections, which is carefully placing that platelet growth factor around the nerve using ultrasound guidance are only done if these nerves are symptomatic. So that's about 80 or 90% of the more common things that are injected during a PICL procedure. Um, and rather than providing a copy of the notes, we're gonna be providing a copy of this form to let the patient know what was injected and this video just serves as a way for patients to better identify those specific structures. So hopefully this helps. Uh, and uh, again, I just wanted to document what all those little abbreviations on the form mean. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.